Algerians return to the polls this weekend to choose local and provincial representatives. The vote takes place earlier than originally planned and a year after a constitutional referendum was held. The scrutiny is also being seen as a test for the new government of President Abdelmarie Tebboune that replaced longtime President Abdelaziz Bouteflika, forced to resign in 2019. During the electoral campaign, pro-government parties have urged Algerians to turn up in large numbers. Parliamentary elections held last June were marked by a low turnout. Many Algerians have lost faith in the system and feel frustrated by the lack of progress in democratic reforms. Performers and athletes gathered in the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa, to dance and sing patriotic songs ahead of a visit to the troops on the front line. The event takes place as Tigrayan rebels claim this week to have taken another town just 220 kilometers from the capital. The government and rebels from the TPLF have been engaged in armed conflict for over one year. Former Olympian Ali Gabreselassi says he's ready to fight. I repeatedly want to reassure them that I'm going to sacrifice and stand for Ethiopia. This group, the TPLF, claims to represent the Tigrayan people, is destabilizing our country beyond their region. On Wednesday, state-affiliated media reported that Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed had gone to the front line. The year-long conflict has killed thousands of people and led to the displacement of around 2 million. More than 400,000 people in the Tigray region also face famine. Passengers at Johannesburg Oar Tambo Airport scrambled to find flights to Europe. The emergence of the new coronavirus Omicron variant in South Africa sparked a worldwide reaction. Professor of Immunology Danny Altman explains. I know it feels very harsh to people in, in South Africa who've, who've really done the right thing and been terribly speedy and vigilant um, in, in, in their reporting. But I just feel that we were, we were so slow to act on Delta and the whole world paid such a high price for it. Let's, let's try and be forewarned and do it properly this time. So I think, I think it probably is warranted. Last minute PCR tests are now mandatory. But the UK-based academic believes that vaccination still offers protection against the worst effects of this disease. I think it's a case of, of kind of hope for the best and fear the worst, isn't it? So um, in some ways, if you look at the, the straight molecular biology of, of the mutations, it looks potentially quite a lot scarier even than Delta. And don't forget, we thought of Delta, I certainly thought of Delta as, as peak variant and probably it couldn't get much worse than that. This looks potentially worse. Um, on the other hand, there's no reporting from South Africa yet that cases are more severe. And it looks like vaccines may still be doing something because we heard from there yesterday that the people in hospital tended to be the unvaccinated people rather than the vaccinated. In Africa, vaccination rates are significantly lower compared to Europe, the United States and other regions. Distribution of vaccines across the continent is essential to stop future variants. In this particular case, um, if it did come out of Botswana and or South Africa, there, there has been quite a lot of vaccine available there. But, but as you say, um, in the African continent as a whole, um, they've, been, they've been very short of vaccines compared to, to Europe or, or, or North America. And things like this demonstrate how foolhardy that is. Um, we're just breeding the future variants to come and haunt us. Why do it? The latest available data indicated that South Africa has registered almost 3 million cases of COVID-19 and 89,211 deaths. The authorities in Burkina Faso fired tear gas at protesters during an anti-government rally in the capital, Ouagadougou. The violence took place this Saturday as hundreds of protesters converged on one of the main squares of the city. The crowds wanted to vent their anger against the failure of President Kabore to deal with extremist violence in the country. The demonstration took place against the background of a suspension of mobile networks that was extended last Wednesday. Groups linked to Al-Qaeda and the so-called Islamic State have been active in the country since 2015, 
killing around 2,000 people and displacing 1.4 million from their homes. Jessica Atta hasn't been to River Aswa since 2014 when she was diagnosed with river blindness. Back then, 1.5 million people in Uganda were affected by onchocerciasis that is carried by the black fly. The vector thrives along water rapids like this one that runs through several districts. With the return of rains, there's been a surge in black flies. The community just outside the city of Gulu is in fear, haunted by a tropical disease that has permanently impaired the vision of many in the region. I sometimes feel a buzzing sound in my ears. My head hurts like I'm being hit. Ten years ago, Uganda had successfully interrupted the transmission of river blindness with aggressive initiatives including deploying airplanes to spray chemicals that killed black flies. Now experts are worried there could already be cases. We have taken long without conducting the, spray, the spraying and as a result, they are having good breeding, breeding ground. So possibly that could explain why the number of the uh, the river, I mean the black flies are increasing. And uh, it is all wearing us, as the district. Uh, first of all, it indicates that we are at a very high risk of what? Of uh, getting river blindness. Again, resurgence of real blindness in the region. Even worse, scientists have suggested black flies may be the cause of nodding syndrome, but available data is not conclusive. Villagers who inherently depend on this river must find ways of avoiding the deadly bites. Children who come here for, to do their swimming and fishing, so those ones are highly affected because when you come to the river in the morning, you can get the, the flies when they're still in an open place. With the sun above my head, you can't see swarms of black flies until later in the day when the temperature drops. And there have also been community interventions like slashing and clearing breeding sites and the installation of trapping nets along the river bank. The government conducts mass drug administration twice a year to treat river blindness and has achieved 90% treatment coverage in rural areas. Razia Athman for African News.